Consider this. When you throw your trash away, it doesn't actually go away. It just goes somewhere else. I turned to the book Zero Waste Home by Bea Johnson because I wanted to take more responsibility for myself in this cycle of, I'm a consumer, right? I, we all are. We bring things into our home, use them, and then offset them and put them back into the world. But I really have little communion with where my things are coming from. I'll call them stuff, where my stuff is made, and where my stuff is going. I'm just the middleman in this process. When I saw the title of this book, Zero Waste Home, it says a lot, zero waste home. It's okay, how do we make zero waste? What is that? So in this episode, I'm going to go into this zero waste movement. I'm going to bring you uh, Bea's, her five R's, which is one of the main components of the zero waste movement. And I'm going to give you some tips and takeaways, just kind of summarizing from the book. Next week, we will have Bea on the show. And if after this episode, if you're inspired or you have questions for her, you can send those to me and I'll make sure to ask your questions live on the next episode. So let's get into the zero waste movement. I'm going to start from the top. I'm going to read a little bit and we'll go from there. All right, stay tuned. All right, so what is zero waste? Zero waste is a philosophy based on a set of practices aimed at avoiding as much waste as possible. It inspires in a lot of people and in myself, this idea of just acting more responsibly as a consumer. So zero waste, does that mean that you can't put any trash in the trash can? Sort of. I mean, that's the principle. That's the metric of which to strive for. It's something to re- really concrete and clear. Bea, in her life, she's managed, there's some videos online and there's a Google talk, and you'll see that she's managed to live her life and her, her life and her family, it's, there's four people in the house, of only outputting a jar's worth of trash. And it's like stickers from bananas and like credit cards and it's like a few things. But she's figured out a way, a system for allowing less stuff to come into her life. And the stuff that does come into her life, she has the system of five R's for dealing with it. And that's what I want to get into now because this is one of the big takeaways from the book. And then the book goes into you know, all the different ways that you could use the five R's in the bathroom, with food, out and about in town. And these are all her tips and tricks for reducing and taking responsibility for waste in your life. And I'll just say, you know, I think the caveat here is, I don't know that this needs to be, in my opinion, I mean, after reading the book, like a a, a total sum game. I think it's like, you're not gonna change overnight and just like all of a sudden go zero waste. I don't think that's at all her intention here, but I think this is more like an encyclopedia. Like that's kind of how I read it of, you know, if you have questions for how do I make less waste with, you know, my housekeeping, with my detergents, she has an answer, a more natural, clean, less toxic and less plastic uh, solution that she's created through her experiments uh, over the years that she's put into um, creating this movement and this book. All right, so here we go. The five R's. The five R's is, it's the, well, you may have heard of the three R's, right? There's this idea of reduce, reuse, recycle. You see that all around town on trash cans. It's like the government put it out, they teach it in high schools. Well, she's like, no, actually there's two more R's. There's refuse, that's a big one. That's the top one, refuse, then reduce, reuse, recycle, and finally, rot means rotting let your food rot mostly composting so i'm going to go through refuse because this here i think if you take nothing away from this episode the one idea of refuse is so important because it helps me after reading this just observe in my own life the things which i don't refuse the the waste which i allow to come into my life right so here we go refuse i'm going to read So Bayer writes, when my family embarked on the zero waste journey, it quickly became apparent that implementing zero waste in the home really starts with our behavior outside the home. Curbing consumption is a major aspect of reducing waste. What we do not consume ultimately will not need to be discarded. 
But consumption does not occur solely through the obvious act of shopping. In our society, we start consuming the moment we step out the door and pick up dry cleaning or hangers and knobs and plastic stuff and leaflets and all this stuff in the front yard. One of the biggest, some one of my takeaways here is business cards. She talks about business cards. When people hand you business cards or leaflets or that junk mail that you get, all of these are things worth observing that are just waste that a lot of times we put our hand out and allow to come into our lives. Yeah. So um, continuing to read from the book, she writes, at a conference, we take one of the goodie bags. We check the contents. And although we already have enough pens at home to last us a lifetime, we think, cool, a pen or cool, a pen or cool, a pen. I don't know how your voice sounds. On our way home, we buy a bottle of wine. It gets double bagged with a receipt. I'm going to repeat that again. It gets double bagged with a receipt before we can say anything. And then we remove a flyer tucked under our windshield wiper. And once home, we check our mailbox and find it crammed with junk mail. And there she goes with the junk mail. So zero waste. Zero waste in this case. Um, it takes in the, the direct and indirect forms of consumption here. And refusing this first R, which is like a main component of the zero waste movement, it addresses this indirect type of, of, uh, of consumption that we have that we don't even know that we're consuming. The handouts, the marketing material, all the stuff that just creeps into our life. Bea's argument here in the refuse section of the book is that the more that we allow into our lives, the more we are creating a demand for that. So every time you take a plastic bag or you take extra, you know, wrapping around your food, extra, all this kind of stuff, an extra um, a water bottle, someone else on the other side of that, the manufacturer in our, you know, our capitalistic society is incentivized to go, someone's buying that. I need to get another one, right? So, I mean, think about and voting, voting with our dollar, right? The fact that you have you have control of, of where this waste is coming from and going. And it's, it's the way that the economics of it works, right? So every, every little bit that we take creates a demand for someone to make more. In other words, like compulsive accepting. So if we just compulsively accept, you're condoning these wasteful practices. So by refusing, so to come back to our main point, by refusing, you are taking a stand and you're being a feedback loop to the manufacturer, to the store. And it's a real, I get it. I get that it's like a really small signal that you're sending, but ideally over time, and she has a bit more kind of activist ways in the back of the book here of like really letting people know and really having these conversations, which I think is important. Um, but how, you know, however you fall onto this, whether it's just refusing plastic or observing, not doing anything, but even just observing it, um, at the very least, I think at least lets us have this conversation about where things are coming from, which we don't know all often and where they are going, you know, from the earth to us back into the earth. So the book is divided into six sections that are each different parts of our life from the kitchen to the bathroom to dealing with holidays or kids, these kind of situations where, where she's kind of highlighting where waste comes in and out of our lives because of these needs that we have. And in it, she has recipes and solutions and processes for how to, how to rethink this and get our waste down to zero. Um, or closer, you know, as close as close to zero as possible, you know. Um, so a few, just like a few takeaways that I'm just going to leave you with here. I'm just going to make this a short episode. Um, are refusing plastic bags, refusing plastic cups, and just being aware of this kind of stuff. Uh, resisting food packaging and disposable, just anything that's disposable, like forks and knives. There's some great stories. There was a great one that I read about a girl. I could try to find the link who lived a whole year without waste as well. It wasn't Bea, but someone was inspired by this movement. And she even has stories of, you know, refusing that little plastic spinner that's in, you know, when you get a cocktail drink at a bar and she would say, I don't want that, you know? And so by putting her voice forward, she's making taking a stand, right? And creating less waste. So good to be aware of this stuff. Uh, junk mail, after reading this book, junk mail was something that I was like, why do I let these big catalogs come into my house? These huge paper that I throw away. I took maybe 15 minutes to just go online and let 
the it was like not to pinpoint anybody but like it was like west elm or ll bean uh the electric company i don't know it was like a few people who were just sending me this junk mail and in about 15 20 minutes i was able to just say hey stop sending me this mail there's even a few services that do it um i could put the links to those below she mentions in the book i haven't tried the services but apparently they'll do it for you if you don't want to reach out to everybody which is pretty sweet um a big part of this book talks about composting, which is something that I'm really passionate about. Here in New York City, I put my compost out once a week. There's a compost bin. I can put it in and the city picks it up. And finally, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're starting a business, I think that there's a lot of opportunity here to embrace the zero waste movement and how the products that you create can create less waste and be more transparent about where things are coming from and where they're going back into the earth. Do they rot? Uh, can they be recycled? All this kind of stuff. So that's something that was something that I took away from this book because, you know, in the future, in the future of this planet and the future of this country, I think we're going to start hearing a lot more about people and companies that can produce less waste. There's going to be a lot more transparency as the data continues to come out and this is a trend and i think this book is uh, is ahead of the curve on that so something to think about and get excited about for sure All right, if you are interested in hearing more about Zero Waste Home, listen to next week's episode with Bea Johnson. Her and I will be having a conversation about the book, about the movement, and how we can make small steps in our life to reduce the amount of trash that we're putting back into the world. So if you have any questions, you can send them to me, chris at on-books.com. Send me those, and I'm happy to ask her. As well as please subscribe to the podcast if you like it. You can go on iTunes. It's free. And you can check out all the book notes at onbooks, uh, on-books.com. Thanks again for listening. And until next week, this has been On Books.